What's going on everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for more than half of that where I head up our futures room. And this room report in this video, we will go over the notable change in the market, hit you with some trade zones, update you on some prior trade zones, and that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off with um, SPY here. So as I was just alluding to, this is a very notable change that's occurred in the market. So if you'll recall, for a long time now, ever since back here in April or really May, even this really wasn't problematic. So the last time that there was actually a structural break in the market was back here. And by structural break, I just mean that a prior area of demand that was built on the way up was traded through. As long as you are going sideways, higher, sideways, higher, sideways, higher, sideways, higher, sideways, higher, sideways, higher, etc. There's really no problems in the market. Right. However, if you're going sideways higher and then all of a sudden you break through an area of demand that was created on the way up, as we did over here, that is indicative of a true structural damage that was created. So we're facing that again. So back here, when it broke down, we got caught up at this area of demand and then buyers broke back over the area of uh, demand that the sellers broke through and then broke over the area of demand, uh, sorry, the supply that was sitting at all time highs a prior all-time highs back tested it and then it was right back to the races right where you have sideways action breakout sideways action breakout sideways breakout sideways breakout you get it and so now here we are and uh that has changed because this area of demand has now been traded through although you know to be fair there are also some notable failures on the seller part as of now so we'll call it exactly for what it is this was a notable failure for the sellers to not fill the gap back down to 537.01 okay however on this bounce you'll notice where are these buyers having problems right now it's right at the value area high of this structure over here which is our key structure we want this guy to get back into demand in order for these buyers to breathe a sigh of relief and say okay we're back on defense and we need to get back over this area of supply to say okay the buyers are back on offense which is why um, this daily no change level is marked up over here. It's the lows of this daily supply. We can mark that up as well, but um, I didn't do it and I don't want to waste your time. So I'll do it later. I kind of doubt um, that we trade through it right away in one week. If we do do that, because I believe there is FOMC next week, if that does occur, well, then this market is, is really just fine. As of right now, the market is in a, in a potential inflection point right because the goal for these buyers now if they're going to maintain over this guy and flip it back into demand they have to find acceptance over 544.72 which as of right now not really that much acceptance over 544.72 if we zoom into the 15 minute time frame you can see how there's been a very very clear battle for it right over here once you fall under it it becomes supply lower high made off of it higher low higher high rejection right from the value area high battle for the point of control reject off the point of control battle for the point of control is how we closed out the week so and you'll notice that the uh point of control of this lower area of demand which is stacked right under it which made all of these lows throughout this area of prior demand also being very reactive so you have these two structures essentially trying to defend uh, rather the buyers are trying to defend off of these two structures they have to hook up off of this one first break over this one uh next and then that will still just put them in a defensive posture because this is the area of demand that is closest to the highest area of supply okay so that is pretty much it space for a day lower high anything under five ah, five five uh five five six point seven four is going to be good for that lower high this bounce has yet to begin so you really don't have a daily bounce yet but if you were to get that daily bounce going again space for a lower high under five five six point seven four and on the weekly time frame you are also starting to making up space for a potential lower high to be set under the all-time high five six five point one six we shall see as of right now this consolidation is still relatively healthy on the weekly time frame because they have yet to get to, to even the uh weekly breakout point which is over here the weekly no change level is 533.07 and of course anything over mm, 518.36 on the weekly time frame is going to be good for a weekly higher low Moving on to the queues here. So the queues are even weaker, right? So this idea I think was shared two weeks ago, clearly a stop out, no biggie. This is now getting to the point again, like I said, where this is structural damage, right? Because here is the area of demand that these buyers had to maintain over in order to, uh, in order to remain confident, right? Just to say that they, they still control the daily trend, they would have to hold prior areas of demand and continue to break out. 
Uh, again, that's what happened back here in March or April. You break through this area of demand that was built on the way up over here on this move. That was the red flag. You get caught up where at the next area of demand, break back over the supply that was sitting at all time high, hold the back test of the supply and then balance breakout, balance breakout, balance breakout. So this is, again, structural damage. This is notable damage and it's seen a lot more follow through than uh, what happened on SPY. So very notable. Um, lots of space for a daily lower high. Anything under 484.43 is going to be good for that daily lower high. And for me personally, I'm I'm not really interested in looking for like standard. I mean, let me see actually. Let's see. What do we do? Okay, so this old trade zone coming into play. But like these trade zones that were established on the way up, like why did we create these trade zones? It was because there was, you know, very clear areas of demand that we could be operating uh, off of using references but as of right now I, that's really not the case right so personally what i'm doing is i'm, I'm not going to hit you with the trade zone this week uh, because i'm personally i'm just going to probably sell a csp campaign start like a kind of a risk reversal kind of a dealio where i'll start selling csps and also accumulating shares that's what i did last time when we were um, in daily oversold conditions back here and i can uh, show you these time stamped uh time stamped uh posts right because obviously you know we, we run the chat room so we post all these things um let's see here right so that was in april um 19th april 19th was this day so at one o'clock or whatever it was when i started the campaign i started selling the uh tqq cash occurred puts and i also bought some shares as you know per the uh update share and so that's pretty much what i'm looking to get done this time again so why did i pick this day i picked this day to start the campaign because one it was daily oversold and two we were coming back in to test this you know area where there was a, a good amount of balance uh, a demand zone right a key demand zone so that is always at least for me at least i know for dan as well it's not exactly the same way dan wouldn't frame it exactly the same way but um what does he care about he cares about extension and location right i care about extension and location dan cares more so about extension and context like price action context he cares less about being super picky with uh, you know specific levels or whatever um he he's more confident in uh using like lower time frame price action trends or whatever but the 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 key overlap here is the um extension right and re really you know context location it's they're very similar right it's not not exactly the same but they're very similar so anyway that's what i'm looking to get done and this time you know we're also, also i believe flirting with no i'm sorry i was thinking about something else uh another private idea but that's what i'm looking to get done again you know it's not like it was a huge back burner trade like this first daily oversold i had a lot more confidence in because you know there that was the first time in a really long time uh, ever since october they didn't even get down to it in october so technically since the uh, october of 2022 um uh, low was pretty the la pretty much the last time we, we saw a daily oversold before here so i'm less confident in daily oversold over here but it's still very similar context and i had that extension so i'm going to be looking to uh make a play for that as opposed to you know i, I mean i guess we could do it right if, if we were to do it like that it would be like this okay so there, there you go this something like this i think is very reasonable using this these big blocks of volume that were made on the way up like this is pretty much we can look at it as one big old block one area of traded side, like a sideways trade. So something like this, I think is pretty reasonable. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not gonna use this kind of a zone blindly, personally at least, something like this, I'm trying to get back up here. I would say very reasonable for uh, the weeks to come. Okay, moving on to the Dow here. So the Dow is actually showing you a lot of relative strength. So the fact that SPY and QQQ is weak, uh, and you know, this is like 10% off the highs almost yeah um the fact that spy and qqq are pretty weak and they're showing you a lot of structural damage is you know obviously not great for the overall market but at the same time you look at the dow you look at the iwm and they're holding up really well so there's definitely a, still a, a bit of rotation occurring and as you know i'm always interested in how much money is in or uh, is, is in the sidelines here in money market funds so that's weird it's not it's not popping up here we go um, so as of July 25th, which is just a couple of days ago, decreased by 11 billion to 6 trillion. So there's still $6 trillion sitting in money market funds. And, you know, like think about what, what's, what's happening, right? Like if, if we are going to get a rate cut situation and the economy is doing okay, meaning jobs are still okay and inflation is cooling, 
Um, well, what's going to happen then, right? Well, in this situation, the market should be okay if the economy is okay. Like the market kind of is projecting what the where the economy will be in the next few quarters or whatever. And so, if we do get rate cuts in an, an economic environment that is fine, then small caps should probably get a a bit of a run here, right? Which is what we've been talking about for a long time, right? It, well, I'll get into that in a second here, but that's the idea, right? The overall market looks okay. Like even though we have, we we're, we're 10% off the highs in QQQ, like, I don't know, off for SPY is probably like less than that, maybe six or seven. It's not even five, not even 5% yet off of the highs. It's not great. Um, but when you see strength in other sectors, that lets you know that capital is not just leaving the market, right? Like during COVID or for, for example, everything was coming down. Everything was coming down together. People were going to flights of safety, particularly cash. Um, because, you know, there was so much uncertainty in the air. That's not what's happening now, right? The SPY and QQQ are coming down, but the Dow is holding up fine. The IWM is holding up fine. The crypto is, 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 is holding up fine. So it's not a situation where capital is leaving the markets, right? You have a situation actually where there's money entering the markets because the money market funds are decreasing. Money that was parked on the sidelines is actually decreasing. So people are putting more money into the market. So you know, um, personally, I'm not too concerned with this retracement, which is why I'm okay with doing that uh, QQQ uh, puts, cash secure put selling campaign and um, probably, you know, accumulate shares as well. I do that in the IRA just because, um, you know, credit selling campaigns, time becomes on your side when you are, you know, selling in a tax-free account. But anyway, if you're interested in that, check out our community. We, we go over this kind of thing all the time. Anyway, so for the Dow, this is actually totally fine for the Dow. The Dow, really, all that's happened so far is they back, it's back tested this. We should move this to here. Back tested this prior all time high here. Did not see that much follow through into a decent bounce to make space for a potential higher low over three nine eight point zero eight. So I don't hate this trade zone. I, I think it's still pretty reasonable. Um, sorry, I just got some people coming in to do some work, so I think they already started. So hopefully they don't get to, they don't get too loud. Anyway, um, yeah. So I think this is pretty reasonable. Although I would like to see hourly oversold conditions, so maybe a little bit less conservative. I mean, less aggressive. Something like this I think makes a lot of sense because as long as you're holding over this daily no change level, this local structure holding over this um, bit of supply sitting at the prior all time high, then you know these buyers are doing just fine. And there's a good amount of space for a weekly higher low to be set. We're not yet confident that that weekly higher low has been set without a break of. 407.62 next week so we shall see i'm surprised eh, it's not that early but it's saturday i'm, I'm surprised you're here so early or someone's breaking into my home i'll keep an eye on it <laughs> or a year out for it iwm so iwm if you are just still managing this trade from in here I haven't really done anything with the runners i, I mean i'm not going to do anything with the runners because uh you know those shares for me at least are um they're risk-free because i day traded rty and then roll those proceeds into iwm so i'm just willing to hold those iwm shares but uh if you're still in from this trade idea that was shared way back when i forget sometime in april um you can walk your stop up to like here right under this low here at 197.41 is a very reasonable location uh, me personally i am interested in looking for ads i will probably continue to do the same thing i think the strategy was shared a couple weeks ago um there was a big section focused on uh, RT. maybe I'll, include, I'll try to find it and include the link in the description below if you're interested in how uh you know some examples and how i was playing rty and uh day trading it and then rolling it into iwm to have this kind of position that i don't really i don't really care about what happens to it, right? i'm willing to just well those are all profits it's all house money so i'll just leave it in but i am interested in adding However, that is the this week's uh, private swing report idea, so I'm not going to go over it here. But I mean, if you've been a follower for long enough, you can probably guess uh, what, what that setup looks like. So lots of space for a daily higher low to be set. Well, not lots of space, but space for a daily higher low to be set over 217.72. Anything over that's going to be good for a daily higher low. And really the key now becomes, all right, well, what's going to happen over here, right? Can these buyers continue to hold over this structure, which is what made all these lows over here? Right, this low and that low and that low, and then it made these highs over here, over here. Right, all of this battle for it, right? Will these buyers be able to continue to maintain over this structure? Because if they can, well then, you know, obviously the as long as they're holding over this guy, then they're working through all of the supply in here. If they can work through all the supply in here and crack this uh, little bit of structure sitting at the all-time high, well then obviously we're looking at new highs, right? So that's pretty much it for IWM. We do have space for a weekly higher low to be set. 
anything over 197.41 is going to be good for one. And again, the IWM, as we've been speaking about for weeks now, should be the uh, a index that would benefit the most from rate cuts because many of these small cap names uh, are heavy in debt, right? And so as rates come down, what happens to their debt? Their debt can become cheaper, right? They can refinance it or whatever, excuse me. So that is pretty much it um, for the IWM. Moving on to the dollar here. So the dollar just continuing to stair step down. Like I said, you know, like we've been discussing for a long time now, there's really no change in the dollar without acceptance either over this area of supply or this or under this area of demand. And so what we're looking at now is just, okay, here's an area of demand built on the way up. Here's an area of demand built on the way up. Can these sellers crack through these areas of demand? If so, then all we're going to do is expect another test of this guy down here because really there's been no change since 2022 in the dollar. Okay. Moving on to the VIX. So this is a very notable VIX spike, right? As we were talking about in the past, this prior low, right? Or rather this low sitting at the October 2023, that's from back here. Um, that's from back here, right? And so the VIX has been very low ever since that move. Right. And so now that the now that we're trying starting to find some acceptance over 15.44, as long as we're finding acceptance over 15.44, what does that tell us? That tells us that there's more volatility in the market right now relative to that entire move since October 2023. So uh, for the VIX, what we're going to be paying attention to then is can these buyers can VIX buyers, volatility buyers, can they stay over 1544? If they can, then we should expect elevated volatility relative to the October low. Just lets us know things are changing. Things are not as they were before. So notable change in the VIX and we'll continue to monitor again, 1544. Okay, NVDA. So NVDA, not looking so great. Not filled this gap over here. This is more or less one way trade under this low here from 106.94 all the way down to like 97.40, which is the weekly no change level. Uh, you can see I have this alert over here because I just sold some cover calls against the NVDA position um, of old. And I am interested in this as well, similar to the QQQ situation. I just want to see daily oversold conditions. Ideally, the weekly RSI comes down to 50, and it would be great if we came back down to backtest all of this area over here. So personally, I am not interested in doing anything NVDA in the next week to come, but I am interested in doing something NVDA if we continue to see further weakness, which I... I don't know. We know we never know, but that's what I'm. I, there's no signs yet of buyers stepping in, despite the fact that they are playing defense off of this local demand zone over here. So that is pretty much it. I'm not so interested. Basically, if I this is very rough, so don't don't just rush into this one. If it does happen to uh, have trigger next week, but something like this, you know, I'm I'm interested in trades on looking like looking at MVDA like this more or less. I think something like this would be pretty reasonable. They probably want to try to come back all the way up here on, on any kind of meaningful bounce, but you know, we'll be a little bit conservative. So if price were to come back down into here, get daily oversold, uh, test this big old block of volume, then I would be interested in MBDA. Moving on to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, let's see. This guy of old, this trade zone of old come, coming back into play. I didn't use it. Um, I was, you know, not really too dialed in honestly to the bitcoin space uh, you know i was uh, winding operations down because i was going to travel travel is over for now at least until october october but either way if you are in from that guy then you, you do, you're doing fine right you, you use three scales chop it up at the high throw your step under the low no problem so what is where do we stand from here in general bitcoin looks fine you know this again is very healthy consolidation as long as this breakout has not yet been negated and additionally remember we're still watching this area of 20 uh, supply from 2021 prior supply now acting as demand from 2021 because as long as you're holding over this structure from 2021 which was sitting at the prior all-time high well then obviously higher except higher prices relative to the prior all-time high structure are being accepted and here are those key levels and the more acceptance you find over 61003.36 the more that this structure is being firm as demand and you'll notice the last couple of lows here, pretty much failures to enter the value area, which is a notable failure on the seller's part. So Bitcoin actually looks fine. So again, like we were saying before, okay, SPY and QQQ, you know, 10%, 5% off of the highs, but then the Dow is not, IWM is near its own highs, you know, Bitcoin is looking strong. There's not a lot of fear in the market, right? And if we go into the fear and greed index, we're probably back in neutral or fearish. We're still back in neutral, you know? So really there's, 
not much uh, to be concerned about in the moment. In my opinion, all of this consolidation overall, especially, is very healthy. So space for a daily higher low. Anything over 63412.46 is going to be good for one, but I don't really care about that. I still just care about 61003.36. I mean, I don't really care about Bitcoin right now in general. I was focused on Ethereum, although um, I missed it there too because I, I forget. I was streaming or something. No, it was July 4th. So I am still kind of more interested in Ethereum. I kind of always have been more interested in Ethereum. Ethereum was actually the first uh, crypto that I bought. Uh, just because I you know, heard the tech and it sounded really interesting to me. Not to say that Bitcoin doesn't sound interesting to me. I also have holdings there as well. But you know, with Ethereum, that was a, really the thing that brought me in. It sounded fascinating, a decentralized, um, essentially TCP IP kind of, right? Like an internet protocol. Um, has it been that? You know, not really. Uh, does, could it still be that? You know, I think so. Um, am I banking it on it? Not really, <laughs> right? But um, crypto is one of my smallest um, exposures. Either way, this trade zone was shared before I left. It was shared before this breakdown. Uh, it was July 4th is when, you know, everything started shaking out. And I knew I had travels coming, so I didn't really want to put too much attention on it. I figured I'd just come back and see where we stand. And as of right now, I had an alert set for it. And unfortunately, it did not fire because they came just shy of it. So you can see here, I have this little um, alert guy. And what I have it set to is once per bar. And so it, it did not trigger, unfortunately, before starting this balance. So I still didn't initiate anything new. But if you were still in from this uh, trade zone that was shared before July 4th, then if you do get follow through, especially over this area of supply, then I would walk up the stop for any runners to under this low. But if not, then I would just for runners, I mean, leave your stop still under here. That's fine. And then just, you know, because the, the, the game right now for the buyers is can they hold over this demand zone? So if they can hold over this demand zone, then again, all of this consolidation still remains pretty healthy. And I'm just watching, continuing to watch these two structures. These two structures are key. This one over here is what rejected price over here and over here. This guy over here I'm watching as well, because if we hold over here, then we should expect price action like this. And of course, this all time high structure is also very important. I'm still interested in trades off of this trade zone if we can get things extended up until at least the four hour time frame. Um, and I'm just waiting to I would I would even be interested in making a play like this. Like if you bounce higher like this, make some space, come back down, crack this guy over here, pop back over. I would be interested in buying that pass back over again. That's why I have that alert set there. Bit more of an active trade zone, but I already gave you guys this one. So, you know, what are you going to do? um that's pretty much it so let me move on here to uh the gme situation so gme actually made some moves while i was gone um but you know you gotta call for what it is right this is the this guy over here this big structure over here is is obviously the problem right now for these buyers where you have multiple rejections from the point of control point of control value area low rejection except etc and then you come back over here and you 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 massively gap up over it can't hold on to those gains and then it's right back to this point of control and the value area low being problematic so as we've been already watching for some some time all of this consolidation so far is really just trying to resolve whether or not the change from this gap is going to be accepted and as of right now the change from this gap still is being accepted right where these value area high of this structure excuse me continues to be um support That being said, there's just very little volatility in this um, asset at the moment. So I'm still not interested in it. I just still want to just, as long as we're not daily oversold, I'm not too interested in it because these days I care more so about um, my operations slowly are becoming more and more like portfolio management than short-term trade. Um, so at this point now I have six accounts to manage, not counting crypto. So, you know, I, I don't really care so much anymore about like the really, really low time frame stuff. I only care about the low time frame stuff when they also align with the high time frame stuff because then I can be the most asymmetric um, with my setups, which again is like uh, what I showed you guys with the IWM and the RTY um, setup. So again, that was just for if you if you are you know seeing this move and you missed out on it, I have a great video that goes over how we capture this move before it shook out. That's how we like to get it done. We had a play last or recently in RTX for the swing report, which is very similar. Um, we just positioned before that earnings gap, before that move up, and that was that way we can scale out some profits before then, protect ourselves. If you're interested in that, then check out uh, the swing report links in the description below. If you're looking for a community to hang out with while you learn the ropes of trading, links in the description below. Um, all right, so why are we back on you? Okay, no, that's it. So GMB, there's really not much else that I care about. I have the alert set for here as well. 
I just want to see some extension because again, for me, I need extension into location. I'm very confident with location, but then it becomes just a matter of waiting for extension. All right. So basically it's like you want to plot out all the different places. It's kind of like fishing, right? Like you want to plot out all the different areas where there may be fish, be open to going to any of them, right? But ideally you'll look for some extension. Like if you happen to know where the uh, fish tend to like swim, towards and if they are if they have a long journey to one area where then maybe there's mating grounds or whatever like maybe you know where all the mating grounds of fish are right and you also know that one of these mating grounds or demands that fish swim really really far such that they get tired and it's more easy i don't know if this is real but <laughs> and it's easier for fish to be captured like through your drag nets or whatever i again i'm not a fisherman i don't know but this uh, hypothetically if that were how it shakes out then that would be a, a pretty you know good example so Anyway, that's 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 pretty much it, right? I want both of these components, extension and location. Otherwise, I can't be as confident in a trade. Okay, moving on to CCJ. So CCJ is in our trade zone now. I still think this trade zone is very reasonable. However, earnings is right around the corner. It's uh, July thirty first, so I think that's I think the date's on there actually. Wednesday. So personally, I'm not going to do anything with this until after earnings. I mean, if you do want to. Um, risk it for the biscuits, so to speak. I would suggest using options, if anything, right? Because then at least you can cap your risk and then, you know, protect from downside. This game is not one, in my opinion, where, you know, you care about maximizing the gains on every trade. It's more far, far more important to um, diminish your uh, odds of taking damage. At least for me, that's been a key, right? Like uh, once I stop putting pressure on myself to maximize the value of every single trade and started prioritizing ease of execution and not taking damage, then the accounts just slowly grew and compounded over time. I think that, you know, most folks who enter the market are just probably too aggressive. And um, so they don't really give themselves enough runway essentially, right? Because if you're, you know, what do they say about, um, what is it like uh, the, uh, the brightest candle burns the fastest or whatever. So like if you come in here and try to be as aggressive, as aggressive as possible, the odds of you, you know, blowing up, right? Melting your candle much greatly increased you know but if you come into the market thinking from a more defensive perspective okay well how can i be in the market and not really assume that much risk well you know the longer that you're in the market and you're not taking damage well then other people are taking damage right so that's the idea i really think that this perspective shift is really key if you're a newer operator give it a shot you know like instead of being so sized up all the time just go ahead and chop that risk in half or, or do a quarter of that risk and you'll see that your decision making becomes more clear because when you are have big risk on you're trying to get the most out of everything every single thing needs to work out otherwise you're going to take damage right you see, you see what i'm saying so instead of thinking okay i'm going to go as big as i can all the time think about how can i be in the market and take as little damage as possible learn these fundamental skills understand that there's more to to trading than again like hitting a bit you just you know, that's like, that's like if you were a batter, you know, and you only went for home runs, right? Like you never, you did not care about the context, right? You don't care, you know, like how many, how many, um, outs, you know, your team already has, you don't care about how many people are on base. You don't care about any of that. You just, I'm going to, every single time I'm going to wing it. I'm going to, I'm going to slam it, apply literally no tact, no strategy to this. I'm just going to always swing for the fences. You know, maybe you'll break some records or whatever. Um, but you know, how well is your team going to do overall? Probably not so great. So anyway, just be mindful of that in my, or it's like a puncher, like a, like a heavy hitter, right? Somebody who has like stone hands and all they ever do is try to knock their opponent out. That's going to be really easy for, for your opponent to figure out, right? Like you're okay. This guy's going to throw a haymaker. <laughs> He's going to throw another haymaker. He's going to throw another haymaker. You know, it might work for some time, you know, but eventually you'll get figured out, you get caught. I mean, unless you're a heavyweight, right? Like heavyweight, it's a lot easier to get away with something like that. Even then it's hard, you know, look at a guy like Derek Lewis or whatever. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, honestly, that's 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 selling him short. He's actually pretty, um, he has a decent skill set. Anyway, you, you, you understand what I'm saying. Don't be a, a one trick pony in this sense. You don't want to be so focused on maximizing gains all the time. All right, that's enough of a tangent. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to wait for um, earnings to pass before looking for, again, extension into this location. I am interested. I think this trade zone does make sense still. Moving on to TAN. So TAN, this came into our trade zone, bounced out. I tweeted out, you know, hey, listen, if you guys use this public trade zone, 
I would suggest taking at least partial profits as we approach the target because you just never know if it's going to actually get there. I know that they're trying to get to this value area high over here at 45.20, but I can never be sure that they are going to get there. So after coming into the trade zone and bouncing a, a, quite a good amount, that's probably, let's see, 20% or so, I mean 10% or so, I can do math. Um, don't tell me that, that about that error. Um, then, you know, like it's, 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 it's like still a pretty good bounce, right? So you chop it up before the target hits. Fair enough. Throw your stop under the low. I would not touch this stop here. You know, if you took this trade zone, chop it up over here, you can leave your stop right under here. Even if you get stopped out for the rest, assuming you took out like half here, then your, your risk is still, I mean, you still be walking away with a bit of a win. So excuse me, that's how I would handle it. And that's pretty much it really. That's it, really. So daily higher low and higher high, but I would be very skeptical of this higher low and higher high really being that meaningful because again, you're just you're just chopping around right now. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. You know, it looks like you like if we're assuming this is a falling wedge, you can we can continue to fall on this wedge for a long time. You know, and we don't have to break out of it even really bullishly. Right here is like, you know, a lot of people were looking at this as a falling wedge and it just broke down. So that is pretty much it for 10. And then finally for MSOs. MSOs, you know, again, I'm not so interested in MSOs, although, you know, I, I do think that um, nothing political, whatever, right? I support whomever you want to support. I don't care. Well, I mean, I care a little bit, but not for the purpose of this video. Um, but, you know, if with, with, with this, you know, with Biden dropping out, um, I, I believe that uh, Kamala has been the most vocal about legalizing marijuana so i would imagine then that if she continues to poll better or whatever um that mso's would probably benefit from that especially if she starts talking about it right it starts campaigning on it or whatever so i would say be mindful of that be open to that and um other than that though from a technical perspective i still think this is a reasonable trade zone i, I hit you guys with a more aggressive one earlier that i already dipped into twice and got to the target twice I still think that one's fine as well. Like if you wanted to, you could combine both of them essentially, right? Something like this, I think makes a lot of sense. Something like that, I think makes a lot of sense. And then for further targets, you're just looking to get like all the way back up here again. Okay, so that is pretty much it from me. Uh, and it sounds like these fellows are starting to do some louder stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for sharing some of your time and energy with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and I hope to see y'all next time. Again, if you are interested in uh, joining a group of 1,000 traders or so, we're in here day in and day out talking about trading, talking about psychology, talking about emotions, trading, you know, talking about tactics, discussing strategy, uh, talking about emotions and psychology, etc. Dan Man is in here, you know, of course, so if you want access, direct access to him, ask him whatever uh questions you may have regarding his hair or whatever then pop into the community if you're interested in getting uh trade ideas sent to you every single week uh live play by plays for any trades that i take or dan takes then consider the swing report again links in the description below and i will try to do my best to find the uh rty example that i was talking about and uh, yeah, if you have been wouldn't mind hitting us with a like and subscribe that helps us out a lot it costs you nothing and so that is pretty much it farewell